Today in When Tumblrites Escape, the Mental Asylum. Good morning, easily offended millennials. Hey. Cute and Kenny. Millennials one out of many. This video is going to include discussions about racism. Neat. Take it away, snip snoop. And because I am white, none of these thoughts about racism in this video are my original thought. It's just in. White people can't have opinions. I accredit to most of the ideas that I have picked up from these two videos created by two very lovely black YouTubers. So go and check them out, please, because they're lovely and awesome and like, why not? I don't know if you've ever heard of this concept, but actually not all black people have exactly the same opinion about things. But um, maybe you should get more sources. Just an idea. All white people are racist. All men are misogynistic. All cisgender people are transphobic. Speak for yourself. I am neither racist nor misogynistic. And I'd say that actually people in the majority overwhelmingly do not hate people in the minority. All members of a majority are biased against the members of the minority or press group. No, they aren't. In fact, most people are racist, misogynistic, transphobic, ableist, etc. What the hell are you on about? I know absolutely nobody who's actually racist or transphobic by anybody's standards. I am racist, classist, ableist, and I probably contribute to many other systems of marginalization that I am not aware of. Again, you're speaking for yourself, and that's absolutely fine. But don't assume that everybody else is a racist just because you are. Words like racist, misogynistic, and transphobic are not insults. Then what the hell are they? They're not compliments. Nor are they stereotypes or generalizations. Uh... All white people are racist, all men are misogynistic, all cisgender people are transphobic. Right, yeah, no generalizations here. All white people are racist. Rather, they are facts about the way we are socialized in a Western society. What is it with you in picking on Western societies? We are the kindest society in the world. You would be stoned to death in other societies and in most other societies. Which you have no experience with, but I'll forgive you for that. I talk mostly about Western societies because that is what I have the most experience with. All right, we can agree with that, but I'd like you to acknowledge that you only have experience with American Western society, not other Western societies, and they're all pretty different. Saying that we're all raised to believe that gender is defined by anatomy and chromosomes is not a stereotype. It's a fact about how we are raised. Sure, and it's also a fact of life. Even if you have liberal parents or teachers who teach you about gender identity, you still come into contact with the idea of biological gender through the media or through interactions with other people. I'm sorry, but biological gender is very much a thing. I don't see you blaming, say, lions for behaving in gendered ways. And they do. And why should it be any different for people? We're just animals. Even if you are raised by open-minded people, you will still be psychologically affected by living in a society built on imperialism. Okay, I think we can all agree that empires such as the British Empire were fundamentally bad things. But A, Europeans weren't the only ones to be imperialists. Look at the spread of Islam. If that wasn't imperialism, I don't know what is. And B, you don't know that. You've only lived in this society. Which, by the way, created cisnormativity and heteronormativity. Again, I'm going to bring up the lions. Lions are predominantly straight and cisgender. That's just the natural way of things. It's not to say trans people are wrong in any way. It's just unusual, a very small minority of things. A 2012 study, which I will link below, observed how white people empathize with black people less than we do with other white people, because our minds register their pain as being less severe than it actually is. I had a look at the study that you're citing, and the conclusions that you're coming to are just conjecture. 
The study itself says that the results were likely not derivative of race per se. We're raised to believe that black people are lesser and that they're more likely to be dangerous to us. Well, I most certainly wasn't. Even though history has proved the opposite to be true. Again, no it hasn't. You're just concentrating on a very specific part of history that suits your narrative. We're raised to believe that gender is based on biology. And it overwhelmingly is. And that features that are typically associated with one sex are repulsive or shocking on the other binary gender. Okay, I can acknowledge that there is a little bit of discomfort associated with, say, particularly feminine men. But a little bit of discomfort doesn't equal blatant bigotry. Especially when it comes to transgender women. Stop being an ass -licker. Beauty standards affect everyone's psychology, and cisnormative beauty standards are no exception. I personally have no problem with cisnormative beauty standards, because actually, this might be news, but trans people aren't a different species, and really don't look that different from cis people. If you followed me this far, and you agree that all people are psychologically affected by marginalization, but you disagree with calling these biases racism, or transphobia, or misogyny, then there's really no point in arguing further. This is what people call a cop-out, because what you're essentially saying is, don't argue with me, it's just semantics. Once a discussion boils down to disagreement over the definition of a word, it's probably not going to be very productive. Maybe. But just because we're having an argument over whether the word cat is used to describe a cat or a dog, doesn't mean one of us isn't right. However, I will make an argument for why I believe we should view racism, transphobia, and misogyny from a wider lens. And you can feel free to respectfully disagree with me. Okay, I'm speeding this up because this is nothing new. I think that when people hear words like racism, transphobia, and misogyny, they think of blatant, unapologetic hate. That is correct. Like violently attacking someone because of their identity. Again. Yes, that's the broad consensus. Certainly people who commit violent hate crimes are very, very bad people. However, I believe to properly dismantle systems of oppression, we must acknowledge that being racist or transphobic or misogynistic or ableist or whatever does not make you a bad person. So if it doesn't make you a bad person, why are you trying to get rid of it? By being afraid to call ourselves racist, we are failing to acknowledge how our biases contribute to systematic racism. Mm, no. Microaggressions are mocked as not really being a big deal. So we fail to acknowledge when they do legitimate harm. That's because they aren't, unless you're an oversensitive pansy. Yes, there have been a lot of police officers who have been outed as members of the KKK. Right, to be fair, if the KKK is now a microaggression, I agree microaggressions are not a small deal. But not every police officer who has harmed an unarmed black or Latinx person has been a member of the KKK. Because most of them aren't. And again, I would like to point out that this is a very American-centric view. Um, and it's broadly accepted that the American police is pretty trigger-happy. Subconscious biases are the reason why we're more likely to see a black person holding a cell phone or a toy gun and think we see a dangerous armed person. Yeah. The American police is a bit trigger happy, and there are big issues with police brutality, but I don't think it's only black people that are facing this. And they're also to blame for the fact that many victims of police brutality were never given the medical treatments that could have saved their lives. I'm sure this is true in some cases, so I'm not going to argue. Microaggressions are also to blame for the fact that transgender women are stereotyped as being sex workers. No. No, really no. Which hurts people like Megan Taylor, who was jailed for eight days after the hotel she was staying at wrongfully reported her. A single point that supports your narrative doesn't mean that your narrative is completely correct. If we refuse to classify people who hold biases and stereotypes as racist or transphobes, then we're not acknowledging how damaging less blatant racism and transphobia can be, and we're not forcing people to become aware of their own microaggressions. Thinking cis people are pretty isn't being transphobic. You're crazy. It's not that big a deal. We're not a racist, white supremacist, transphobic society. That's not who we are. The whole point of acknowledging that we're racist, transphobic, misogynistic, etc. is so that we can better recognize our biases. No, it's so that you can guilt people into agreeing with you. And work to overcome them. There's nothing to overcome.
So those are my thoughts. So to review, there's nothing that can't be solved by getting off Tumblr and partaking in actual human interaction. Bye.